thanks for the kind introduction and also thanks for this great opportunity to see you all in person and to share my work with you. And today I would like to uh, introduce our Gestalt Mentor research platform that the user can use it to analyze their patient and also facilitate the novel gene phenotype exploration. So first of all, the first part in my presentation, I will introduce our recent published Gestalt Mentor approach. And also I will introduce how we can use it to answer the longer and splitter problem. And the second part of my presentation, I will introduce our Gestalt Mentor platform and the user could use it to visualize the patient photos and further to analyze their cohort. So first of all, the, in our study, we are using the facial recognition technique to analyze the facial dysmorphism. So the, mm, the first part is that we train the deep convolutional neural network on thousands of patient photos and to, to quantify the, the similarity between the patient and the genetic dis disorders. Then we could further diagnose, diagnose this patient. So by this way, uh, the, this uh, technology is already widely used in the daily diagnostic workup. And in recent years, this technology has already significantly progressed in the last few years. So in 2000, 2019, Dick was published in the Nature Medicine. It supports more than 200 syndromes, and it also running behind the well-known place to be platform to, for the uh, diagnosis. And in 2020, so this year, so we published the Gestalt Mentor approach in the Nature Genetics. So uh, this approach can be seen as the extension to the Deep Gestalt approach. So the most importantly, we support the analysis on the patient level. So how do we uh, extend this approach, extend the uh, Gestalt approach from the Deep Gestalt? So first of all, we look at uh, this figure is the uh, structure of the Deep Gestalt approach. So deep gestalt can be divided into two parts, uh, feature encoder and the classifier. The feature encoder is to learn the facial feature and the classifier is to classify the patient into the disease we train in the network. So we first train this network on 21,000 patient photos of the three hundred syndrome. We later take the last layer of the feature encoder as the facial description. Then we spend a clinical based phenotype space by this 320 dimensional feature vector. Then each patient is a point located in this space. Then we could further perform the classification or mention of the patient with around 1,000 syndromes. So um, we are no longer restricted to the original 300 syndromes we train in the network. And most importantly, we can do the, this, we can quantify the, uh, the similarity among different patients so we could perform the analysis on patient level. And here I would like to take the lumper and splitter as the examples. So what is the lumper? So lumper means that we would like to associate one, dis one phenotype to another disorder or the, another phenotype series. So for example, here we have a disorder B, then we feel like the di disorder B is very similar to disorder A. Then we, we would like to associate disorder B into the phenotype series of disorder A. And on the other hand, the splitter means that we would like to separate a phenotype into two disorders that lead to different genetic causes. So here is another example. Here, if we look at on the left, uh, on the right, is the subset of the, okay, it's the subset of the disorder C. Then we feel like uh, this disorder C has, uh, this subset has a different genetic causes and also uh, have different facial phenotype compared to the left, left part then we would like to move this disorder out of the disorder C to become another disorder. Then this is the splitter. Then here I would like to take two uh, cohorts as two examples. So because the manuscript is still under revision, so I, I would like to use the gene X and gene Y instead of the original gene X. So here we have seven patients of the gene X. And we found that the gene X uh, have the premature facial uh, features that's so we, we compare this gene X to the other, uh, the other syndromes like the Baltimore Thompson syndrome and the other premature aging syndrome like the Banner, Cocaine, and Blue syndrome. Then here in the Tisney projection of the patient on the right, here we can see that the patient of gene X are highly overlapped with the Baltimore Thompson syndromes. So therefore, this, uh, and also compared to the other Cocaine and Bloom and Banner syndrome. So therefore, the results suggest that gene X might be connected to, might be merged into the Baltimore Thompson phenotype series. And the second example is the splitter. And 
In this cohort gene Y, we have 33 photos uh, from 32 patients. And the disease coding mutation are separated into two exome. So 10 photos from, uh, from the exome one and 23 photos are from exome two. And here we see the patient in different exomes show the different facial phenotype. So here, if we generate the, uh, the pairwise matrix on the right, then here we can see that uh, each column here is one patient. And the, pa the column is sorted by the genomic location from the left to the right, and here is the exome boundary. So here, um, in this matrix, when the color is darker, it means that two patients are more similar. Then here we can see that the, these, two, these two group of the patients show a different, totally different phenotype. And more, moreover, and in this patient, these patients with the milder symptom due to the modalism, then it also shows the my different phenotype compared to the other patients. So therefore, the results suggest that the disorder can be separated into two disorders lasting to the different genetic causes, which is the different exons in this example. Okay, so now if you are interested in this, uh, this kind of analysis, my, you might wonder where and how you can run this analysis. So here I would like to introduce our Gestalt Metro platform that you could run the Gestalt Metro analysis. So this platform is run by the AGD, which is the non-profit organization in Germany. So in this database, we currently host uh, around 6,000 patients' photos and from 1,800 publications, and we cover around 600 uh, dis uh, different dis disorders. And in this platform, you could visualize the uh, patient photos like a profile and the front photos or like a hand x-ray images. And in this database, we store, the, we store the, not only the photos, we also store the data information like the, the age, ethnicity, and the sex, and also the privacy statement setting. Then you could just, just protect your, uh, your photos, because maybe this the unpublished photos, then you could protect that being seen from the others. And we also store the information like the publication, then here you can find the public ID and also the email from the corresponding author, then you could easily come back to source back to the author to have more details, uh, more content and to get more detail of the patient. So here I would like to uh, show you how we can really run the analysis on this platform. So here, and I will show an example is that I add a photo into the existing research. So for example, I take this patient, which is the NCAS2 patient, then here I added this patient into the GFH 2022 demo research. Sorry, it's a little bit small. And then I, now I add this photo into the research, and here we can go to the research to check uh, the patient. So here we, I already add five Kabuki patients uh, in this research. So here is five Kabuki, then this is the six patients we just added. So now I would like to change some labels, so because this is the NCAS patient, so here I change label as N1, and there's a class label, which is Kabuki, then here I change to NCAS2. Then after update this research, then also here if you go down, then the label is also update. Then now I just press the run button to run the analysis, and now the analysis might take around 10 to 15 seconds. Here we can see the label here is the label you might want to use in your manuscript. So it's the, maybe sometimes the case one, case two. And the class label here you can use as like a disorder label or the um, gene label, like Kabuki and then class two here in this example. So here you can see the first is the pairwise similar, similarity matrix. Here you can see that on the left hand side, this is the n class patient is totally different from the, uh, share a totally different phenotype compared to the uh, Kabuki syndrome. And also we have the uh, pairwise comparison uh, of, on the rank-based uh, matrix. This is, we compare to the other 4,000 patients as the control cohort uh, in our database. And in the end, it, it, the this needs this kind of uh, projection because we now only have six patients, so, uh, so it didn't, didn't, didn't look like uh, what you're familiar with. You, you usually read in uh, the manuscript. So here, this is an example in uh, how you can run the analysis. And then in the end, uh, once you have the result, you might want to publish to the Meta Archive first. So, but you might always uh, encounter issue if you want to put the photos in the Meta Archive because uh, 
we are not able to do it. So here is a, an alternative solution that you can come to your patient and just copy the URL of your patient and insert this link into the summary table in your manuscript. And in the end, you just describe some sentence in your video caption and just refer to the author that uh, the patient can be found by this link. So to summarize, our gestalt measure approach can uh, analyze the patient on the, either a cohort on the patient level and our gestalt measure database can provide a service like you know, analyze your cohort with the gestalt measure approach. And because now the, uh, this platform is only by invitation, accessible by invitation, so if you are interested in our study, so please contact us. So in the end, I would like to thank to all the collaborators and all our colleagues and also thank you. I'm happy to answer all the questions. Thank you so much for this incredible talk. There's already a question from Brunhilde. Can you please speak up? technology we use is similar, but I think the most, uh, the biggest difference is that uh, we are trying to make uh, this science open to all the research community. So all the photos we collect in this project, uh, so in the end we would like to open to all the research community, like everyone who uh, is sitting here. So you just let me know, we, have, we will uh, give you the access. And we will also like to open this model that, that everyone can really benchmark in the model and compare to uh, we can compete with each other to push this research field uh, faster because I think the, uh, the biggest difference between this medical field and the computer science field is that because our data is only restricted to our hospital or a very small group. So that's why we are trying to make it open to everyone then we can compete to each other to push this research field faster. Um, I have a question myself. You um, showed a lot of symptoms. What if a patient does not have any symptoms at all? Do you have non-symptomatic patients as well? Because, um, I mean, with a software always assign a symptom even to perfectly healthy individuals? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so here, of course, and we are trying to analyze the facial dysmorphism. So our target is the patient with the facial dysmorphism or syndromic patient. Of course, we have a lot of patients which are non-syndromic or doesn't have the facial dysmorphism. So now we are trying to make another like a screening uh, process. We are, there's a software that like screens like facial whether this patient might have dysmorphism. If it has, then we push to the further analysis like this facial dysmorphism analysis. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. I guess in the interest of time, we have to move ahead. Um, next speaker will be Martin.